so our website has been pretty seriously customized. But we could stand to add a couple more effects. We can add parallax scrolling to one of the images and add a custom font as well. So first let's focus on customizing this footer. We'll target footer one. And within here, we're gonna change the background color. And we're gonna change that to 3C. And then we're also gonna add some padding to the top. And that'll be 75 pixels. And then we're gonna target the column small twos. And then we're gonna target the buy button. And within there, we'll target an anchor tag with a class of button. And we're gonna change the background color. And we're gonna set that to 2A, 2A, 2A. And then we'll also set the hover state as well. And that's going to be similar to above to this hover state. So we'll copy those properties through. And right before the footer one closes out, we're gonna target additional links. And we're gonna change the border top color. And that's gonna be 4, 3. And then we're also going to change some of the social buttons and we're just going to give it a margin top of 25 pixels. And then we're going to change the nav ULLI, and we're going to add a margin bottom of 8 pixels. So now down to the bottom of the page, we can see that our footer blends into our design. And it looks pretty good, except we kind of have this awkward space right here between these columns. So we can actually write a quick little media query to fix that. So below padding top of 75 pixels, we're gonna write a media query. And we're gonna set the minimum width to 940 pixels. And within here, we're gonna target call small five. And we're gonna set its padding left to zero. And we'll copy this because similar down here below buy button, we're actually going to take the padding right and change it to zero, but just within the buy button. So now we can see that we've actually spaced out our footer a little more. So we actually have it pushing out over here and our buttons pushing out over here as well. So let's check to see how this looks when we resize it. And we can see this looks pretty good in a browser. So down here where our scripts are, we're gonna add a reference to our jQuery parallax. And we'll add that right below our page transitions. And just like all the other JavaScript files, they're within common files under the JS folder, and this is just called jQuery.parallax.minjs. So now that we have Parallax added, let's write the script for it. So down here at the bottom, we'll open up a script block, and within here, we'll write a self-invoking anonymous function, and we'll import jQuery, and then we'll pass the dollar sign through as the parameter. And the first thing we'll do is we'll select content 23 and we'll call the each method and we'll pass a function through that. And then what we'll do is we'll wrap the this keyword in jQuery and we'll call parallax and we'll check it to be 50%. And then we'll also set it to 0 0.3 and true. So let's check to see what this is doing in the browser. So let's scroll down our page and we can see as we're scrolling through, we get kind of a strange image effect that's not so much parallax. And that's because we need to set a style with this image. So within content 23, we're gonna set a property for background attachment, and we're gonna set it to fixed. So now we'll scroll down to the bottom of the page, and we can see that we have this pretty awesome parallax effect apply whenever we scroll through the page. So let's check to see how the parallax effect looks when we resize the browser. So it looks pretty good from a browser standpoint when it's smaller. Let's emulate it on an iPhone 5. So we'll scroll down through and it looks pretty good, but all of a sudden we kind of see this little fragment down here. And one thing to be aware of is that parallax doesn't really work all that well on mobile all the time. So we might want to disable parallax when it's mobile. So down on our script block, inside of our each function, we're gonna write an if statement. And what we wanna see is we wanna see if we're mobile or not. And Startup actually provides us with a helper function to check to see if something's mobile. And we wanna to check to see if something's not mobile. So we'll say if not is mobile, we want to do parallax. Else, we wanna set the background attachment to initial. So we'll wrap this keyword in jQuery We'll set the CSS property for background attachment. 
and its value will be initial. So now let's scroll through this page, and we can see that our parallax effect doesn't actually apply when we're emulating through an iPhone. So let's reset it. And now that we're reset, we can see that we get this parallax effect because we're no longer emulating an iPhone. So now that we have our parallax effect implemented, let's focus on adding a custom font. So we're gonna be using Typekit as our font library. Typekit does have free plans, but we're gonna be using a premium plan to get Proxima Nova. You can try Typekit for 30 days on a premium plan and see if you like it. So we're gonna hover over this and we're gonna click on these little brackets to use for the web. And we'll click use fonts. We'll click into the web and we'll make sure to create a new kit. We'll call this baseball app and we'll put one in for local host and we'll disable the Colophon badge. This means to use Typekit, you're going to have to be running on a server. So you're going to have to be able to spin up some type of local server and you can't just run this on the file system. I'm gonna be running this on a local express server and I'll have the code for that provided as well. If you're more comfortable with something else, it makes no difference. So we'll continue. And then this tells us how to install the script. So we can copy this, but we're not ready to add it to our site. If you look down to the bottom right, it says changes won't be live on your site until you publish them. So we click this publish button. And now that the modal's gone, we can paste that code into our project. So at the bottom of our page, we'll paste in these script files. And now our website should be able to load Proxima Nova, but we need to specify where to use it in our styles. First thing we'll do is we'll make a variable for it. And then we'll go down here to our nav bar and we'll add a font family of Proxima. And before we can run this, we're going to need to run a server. So right here in this file is just a little express server that'll load up a server on port 3030. If you have Node.js and Express installed, you'll be able to use this script. So in the terminal, I'm inside our folder that we were using for the editor. And I can say node server.js. And we can see that it's listening on port 3030. So now let's add Proxima to the rest of the page. So we're setting the font family to Proxima for navbar. So if we scroll down to features, we want to set it for the h6, the p tag, and the h3. And then if we scroll down to the footer one, we want to set it for the footer as well. So back in our page, we know that we changed the nav links already. So let's scroll down and we can see down in our features that this has Proxima Nova font as well. And if we go down to our footer, we can see that the font's been applied there as well. So in this lesson, we were able to apply a parallax effect to this image right here, as well as update custom fonts using Typekit. And if we scroll up and then take a look through this page, we can see that we've done quite a bit of customization. This was the original design, and it's safe to say that it looks pretty different than what it used to be. So using the startup framework, you can get going really quickly on building custom websites. So just like always, my name is David East. If you have any questions or want something explained in more details, just leave me a comment or you can hit me up on Twitter.